if I wanted more money, I'd be making move bombs, honey. <laughs> you are a disrespectful piece of You know what's good for me. That's my opinion. I am always putting myself in his shoes and my therapist is like, yeah, you're an empath. What? What the fuck? For sure. I started LOLing. I was like, yeah, I'm so quirky. Yeah, I'm so quirky. Uh, the narco work had a heart attack. How some sympathy. Sorry, I'm trying to find my sympathy bone. My sympathy. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't care. Proper grammar, no matter what I'm doing, whether I'm writing a note to somebody or whether I'm just texting or tweeting, no matter what it is, I just like have a really big like OCD with it. Like it's kind of like a perfectionist problem. <laughs> oh, sorry, I farted. <laughs> I was receiving a bunch of Instagrams today of people spelling beautiful in a really weird way. And I was like, what's happening? Okay. When I say a bunch, I mean like 10. So I was like, okay, the trolls are out tonight. I love that. And it's because of this. So right here in my little poster you guys recently saw, here, let me flip it around and show you guys. Right here it says beautiful, but as you can see, happy accidents, mistakes are normal. This was on purpose because <laughs> I wanted a section on here where it's just like, you know what? Accidents happen, mistakes are normal, it's okay, that's life. Um, I kind of wanted that on here. But yeah, I just, I wanted to clarify, I do know how to spell. I personally tend to disagree, but what do I know? I'm just an immigrant educated woman. When I was 15, I was asked to be a plus size model, but my parents said no. Hi, Timu. Love your stuff. Love it. It's great quality. I have a mess, though. All right, bye. When I was five, I actually dressed up as a Dalmatian for Halloween and I was in a Halloween costume contest and I won first place and I was in the newspaper from it. You look like a snake! The question everybody wants to know is, what happened to the bench monster? Yikes on bakes. <laughs> Lucy, so you're catching me with no makeup on? It's fine. I'm all natural for this week. Um, therapy, this session went really good. Um, ever since I was diagnosed with PTSD, um, I have to fill out a worksheet every single week right before the appointment and my scores have already lowered. So therapy <laughs> works, children, do it. Um, I wish, obviously I wish I would have done it sooner, but can I give money to the homeless? Every time I've ever played bingo for money, I have one each and every single time. Things, lipstick, fixed my frizz, and yeah. I want you guys to know that I'm not, like someone sent me this on Twitter. It's like people, every time I like look in the viewfinder, people think I'm vain for it. It's really because I'm trying to like get used to this and see if I'm in focus and it's weird to see myself. There's a Becky creeping in the back. So I'm not vain person, like I don't, I think I'm ugly. So it's like, I literally think I'm ugly person. So you can't be vain if you think you're ugly. This became a little too sad rather quickly. I would I would take the hoop out and then I'd keep that. Ooh, girl, I like it. Okay, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm I'm crazy. Oh. 
letting the lamb spread. Little Gotti got the shoddy to your body, so don't put this or you might miss Christmas. I took guns, I make number runs, I give MCs the run stripping. When I throw my clip in the AK, I slay this far away. My mom was making me a cup of noodle and the phone rang and I was super impatient and she was on the phone. I was about four years old and my mom told me, honey, wait until I'm off the phone. Don't go get the soup. It's too hot, blah, blah, blah. And I totally ignored her. I got the soup and we lived in the apartment complex at the time and we were on the top floor. So I went outside onto the steps and I kind of was just sitting there eating it. And I guess my mom got off the phone because she came up behind me and she's like, Amberlynn. And she scared the holy hell out of me because I knew I was doing something wrong. And I spilled the soup all over my leg and I got third degree burns. It was super horrible. I had to go to the hospital, ouch. And for some reason, I don't have a single scar from it. So I'm like super grateful about that. Every single night almost. And there are some nights when I binge and I'm just like amazed with how much I could eat without feeling full. Sometimes I get super sick and I still keep eating. That's when you know you have a problem. And then there are other times where I literally can't get full and it's like, I need to feel full. I know that's obviously mentally something's wrong with me. I know, but it's just good, you know, that I can admit that I have a problem and I know I have a problem. Some people can't admit that. So, voice. When writing, I have about 10 different handwritings that I can do and succeed in. like. I could write one way and then write another way and then write another way. It's actually kind of cool. I don't know. I think it's because like I did a lot of writing when I was younger and because I practiced a lot of different type of handwritings. The constant Ray Hill update. I really want to speak to the person who sent me the food because I want to get a clear understanding of why it happened and if I need to apologize, I will do so because the way I reacted was very much based on how my day was already going slash everything else that I am currently dealing with when it comes to YouTube, things that I am currently not talking about. It was kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back and I just want this person to be able to speak to me personally. I don't want to attack them. I want to understand them. And so I posted this on Instagram and I have gotten over a hundred messages of people saying that it was them. So obviously it was not over a hundred people who did it. So I'm not getting a clear picture to what kind of supporter would send me bread and a huge thing of pie. I, I want to understand this person more and I hope they reach out to me. and what they save, I'm able to see that. And these are the top things that my audience searches for and saves. Amberlynn Reed Mookbong Compilation, Amberlynn Reed Torrid, Amberlynn Reed Eating, Amberlynn Reed Cheesecake Factory, Amberlynn Reed Calorie Count. So, that's interesting. It's like people always say, we don't want the mukbangs. We don't want the eating, but those are like the most popular. Or we don't want the Torrid Hall body shots, but then that's also the most popular. That's really interesting, wow. So I'm pistachios. Anyways, so I've realized that I have a hard time explaining myself because so many people thought that I was like giving up on the whole weight loss surgery thing. I don't know like what I said that gave people the idea that I was. I guess it was that video like saying how I have bad news. And honestly, like at the time that was bad news to me because I went from thinking I was gonna have weight loss surgery, you know, in like three to four months to, oh my God, it's gonna be a year. So in my opinion, that was bad news for, you know, the timeline that I wanted. So I guess in that video, it came off that I was like giving up and that, no, you guys, I'm not giving up. I am still doing everything that they're gonna tell me to do and are telling me to do. And I'm still gonna document you know, my journey, I'm just not gonna be so like in your face about it. Bocce, yeah, yeah. I like a little bit of it everywhere. Over 600 pounds, still not 600 pounds. So there was a new scale that I bought that I started using. You guys actually saw that. And when I first got it, it was only like two to three pounds different from the scale that I was using before. It actually made me two to three pounds heavier and I was totally fine with that. I was like, it's cool. Then there was like two weeks where I did not weigh myself at all. And I stepped on the scale and I said I was down like 30 pounds. I was like, I'm doing the damn thing. Um, it was inaccurate. 
it was inaccurate. Unfortunately, that scale, it weighs Feline right on point. Right on point with our other scale too. So the whole time I thought I was a certain weight, but I wasn't. So I went to my trusty scale that I stopped using because my ankle, my ankle is completely healed, doesn't hurt ever. Um, it's totally fine. It's just the scale is a higher platform and it does do this little thing because it's on this little, I'll have to show you guys um, in a video or something. The scale is actually meant for like car parts. <laughs> I bought this years ago, it was super expensive, um, but it's the most accurate scale. Um, it's never faltered and I've had it for years, um, but it was hurting my ankle when I was getting on it, but it doesn't anymore. So I just, I'm going back to that. So when I stepped on the scale and I saw that that other scale was inaccurate, uh, my heart dropped. I was very upset with myself. Um, my dietitian does know my weight and she knows my accurate weight, which is the one that you're about to know. Um, I'm very let down, but you know what, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna be following my dietitian's rules, you know, doing everything that she wants me to do like food wise. So I'm really excited for that to start showing up on the scale. But here's my weigh-in for today. I did take a picture for you guys, 523.6. And it's sad because I did think I was back in the 400s, but I am okay. I am so okay with this. Um, it kind of feels like, I don't wanna say a fresh start because this is not no phase one. <laughs> I've been in phase one since what? Um, let me check the time now. Uh, okay, since December. Everyone's always like, oh my God, everyone's in her phase one. Like I have heard this in almost every single video since like December. You guys, I'm staying. I'm staying in this phase. We're doing the damn thing. But yeah, it just feels nice to know like my real weight. And I'm just, it kind of sucks because I thought it was somewhere that I wasn't and it's fine. You know, it doesn't change the work that I've done already. I'm sorry, I'm not wearing a bra because I feel like I didn't need one, okay? Free the nipple. <laughs> Free the nipple. No, I'm not gonna lie. I should probably be wearing a bra, but this is that chalice maxi dress that I was extremely worried about. I'm drawing a blank. What is this? Oh yeah, <laughs> okay. Um, I like to wear maxi dresses around the house. I don't have a really pretty pink one. So it's a really, really long pink maxi dress. It is in the uh, material chalice, which is not my favorite. That material tends to be a little tight, but you know what? It's for in the house, it's to be comfy. I was not expecting it to fit me because even in Torrid, the highest size they have in chalice used to not fit me. She fits me perfectly. And she's like even a little loose. Oh my gosh. No, no, no I clue. I was trying to say no idea and no clue at the same time. I'd have no like idea that this was only a dollar. I love this color. Cute. I scored on was exhibitionism, which means this trait refers to a person's need to be the center of attention and willingness to ensure that they're center of attention. I feel like all YouTubers kind of have that. The lowest one I scored on was vanity and entitlement, which was zero. So vanity, the trait refers to a person's vanity or their belief in one's own superior abilities and attractiveness compared to others. Definitely not me. In entitlement, this trait refers to the expectation and amount of entitlement a person has in their life that is unreasonable expectations of especially favorable treatment or automatic compliance with one's expectations, which is definitely not me either. Second highest that I got though was authority. Whoopsies. So it says authority refers to a person's leadership skills and power. People who score higher on authority like to be in charge and gain power, often for power's sake alone. Ugh, I don't like power, so it's kind of weird. Then my uh, third highest was exploitativeness. Exploit, exploitativeness. I can't say that word, I'm sorry. But that means this trait refers to how willing you are to exploit others in order to meet your own goals. Very very low. I got a one for um, superiority and self-sufficiency. Self-sufficiency is this trait refers to how self-sufficient a person is. Superiority, this trait refers to whether a person feels they are more superior than most. So again, my highest is the exhibitionism authority. Lowest is vanity and entitlement. So that was actually really interesting. <laughs> Becky, you're so hot. Ugh, I can't take it. Can you be mine? That's a that's a lie. I know I'm they're trolling. So hot. I know they're trolling. I'm not even in shot anymore. They're trolling. Yeah. So my hair is just in this half up, half down, really cute earrings. I don't remember where I got these from, but they're definitely one of my favorites. And I'm wearing a dress, obviously from the good old tour life. Lace and button is this part. The rest is just like this cotton. So that is what is happening oh my god i feel like i look kind of cute like i never think that maybe it's the weight loss <laughs> no but for someone my size like you you can't really tell that i've lost weight which kind of sucks especially because i feel like i've lost a pretty good amount so yeah i'm just waiting for becky and i figured i'd wait for her outside because it just feels pretty nice and i really don't sit out here often and i feel like i should start so i actually disgusting i don't share my journey to be judged or speculated on and i know a lot of people are like well that's part of youtube that's just a disgusting way of saying, oh, well, deal with it. 
No, we need to work on, as a society, being able to be open and not fear bullying or harassment or just like really horrible things said, said to us. It's just a lot of like, if you don't want people to be rude to you, don't talk about it. Instead of, we need to take the people who bully and harass and say horrible things offline. Like, it's too much of the wrong thing, if that makes sense. So while we're here, I actually went to sleep crying. Crying myself to sleep. Um, I'm just taking off my makeup so I can get in the shower. So this isn't like, like I know when people hate, when people are like, I'm going through something, but I don't feel like talking about it. I know people hate that, which I find so weird. I feel like sometimes people just want to feel less alone. So they say, you know, I'm going through something, keep me in your prayers, thoughts. But sometimes they're just not ready to share what they're going through. And sometimes when you're going through something, especially painful or hard, just the way that you are as a person changes. So I think that's why a lot of people, you know, say, I'm going through something, but I don't feel like talking about it right now. I just feel really emotional when I like talk about my brother and how, you know, the things that he's going through, I'm not gonna get into detail because that's not for me to say. And my therapist told me that like, he feels like I forget that I am also going through a lot. Like, because I'm constantly putting myself in like my brother's shoes and like, feeling guilty over the things that he's going through, even though they're not my fault. My therapist says I need to learn and figure out how to focus more on like me. Like I also am going through a lot. And that was really interesting. Not wearing my makeup to sleep, but then I was like, oh, that's what happens when you like have a hardcore makeout session and you're wearing tons of foundation, you like lose foundation and then Feline has foundation on her face and like we're two different skin colors obviously so you can definitely see the foundation when it's on her face <laughs> oh my gosh do I need more do you think that looks good my favorite part is when I am angled like this and you guys say that's a horrible angle for her it's literally all because I'm fat skinny people vlog like this all the time and no one says anything. It's because I have double chins. I don't care. I don't care. Like, <laughs> I've never cared. I've never cared about showing my body. I've never cared about showing my weight. I've never cared. I don't care. Coming out completely out of it. I have been out of it, so. So the next thing is, Picky and I are not done filming weigh-ins for you guys, but I did recently go through something and I do not want to talk about it. I hate when people are like, I hate when people say how they're going through something but won't tell us what it's about. I love when people do that because it's good that they're comfortable enough to let us know that something is bothering them, but I don't- Beautiful Monica and beautiful Jasmine. I heard that you guys have been friends for 20 years. I think that is phenomenal. That's, that's a long time. That's two decades. Now to have a friend like that is pretty incredible. And you guys want me to, you know, read a little poem about friendship that I wrote? I have one. Most of my poems are kind of sad. <laughs> I don't know. I just find the most um, passion in my poetry when I'm like sad or hurt or lonely or whatever. But I do have a poem that is about a best friendship. What am I saying? A best friendship? Wait, is that is that right grammar? Y'all know me, y'all know I can't speak right. So it's about two best friends and one of them is actually in love with the other one. It's very, very short. It's called Secret Love and I wrote it in 2022. Not my best writing, so don't get your hopes up, but no one's ever heard this poem before, so it's just between us. You sat next to me today and I could smell the cherries that lived in your hair. You smiled at me without knowing that you were the reason I wore my favorite shirt. You know, low-key, 
but I feel like it says a lot. So anyways, I love you guys. And think I was supposed to be even as a toddler. I wasn't like massive as a toddler. I was a little cutie, okay? So here are some photos if you wanna see. Um, but I was, you know, a little chunky. I wasn't skinny by no means, but you know, I had a few extra pounds. <laughs> I had a few extra pounds going on. And I just remember so well, like, especially when I was like seven, people just telling me, oh, this is just baby weight. She's gonna be fine. You know, it's, it's something that stuck with me for a while. And then once I hit puberty, it was like, oh, don't worry. You know, once you hit puberty and now that you have, things are gonna start evening out and you're gonna lose weight and all this stuff. Nope, never happened. So I, I did not do Vlogmas last year and I did it because I was in a new relationship and I, I filmed around her and all that, but I was like very shy to film. So I didn't do it as often. Like I didn't vlog as often and when I did, um, it was like away from her or I'd be like, can you shut the door and put headphones in? Because I actually am deep down a shy person. I don't know if you guys know that about me. Probably not because I have a YouTube channel, but I'm very shy in person until you get to know me. And then when you get to know me, my wild side comes out and I'm a little obnoxious, a little loud, a little blunt, way too fun. I feel like I have a good personality. I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I've been told, okay? Anyways, I feel like I'm generalize from a single incident. Um, when I do like mind reading, which is like you assume people are thinking negatively of you when there is no like definite evidence for this. And then the last one is emotional reasoning. When you have a feeling, so you assume there must be like a reason, like you assume that you are correct in that. So I. Baby. This is why I don't film eat with me videos. Like, what am I doing? So I know I said I was never gonna film a mukbang again, and I don't want to consider this a mukbang. A mukbang is supposed to be huge, large quantities of like McDonald's and Chinese food. I mean, it could be anything. And I just want to call this eat with me. You're literally just eating with me, and we are talking about life about what's going on in my life. And I wanna say we're talking about things that are going on in the world, but let's not make it depressing. This world is freaking crazy. Mm -hmm. That's great. And if you're wondering what seasonings I used, I didn't use anything with sodium in it. Like normally I would use garlic salt, but instead I just use garlic powder, which I don't really know if it has like sodium. If it does, it's probably very little. And I used pepper and I used minced onion. Because the chicken sausage already has so much flavor, so much. So I feel like with the chicken sausage, you can literally do anything with it. Like I'm obsessed. It's just easy to cook. It's there. You don't have to slave over the stove for it. And why don't you talk about some of the things I got you? I will, we don't have to talk the whole time. <laughs> I just feel like she's eating extra slow. She doesn't, she never eats this slow, you guys. Yes, I do. No, baby. You haven't even finished your first burrito. Burrito, burrito. soft taco. God, learn the difference between a taco and a burrito. But it's soft. And then come back to me. 
and then come back to me. <laughs> it's just my whole life, all the tacos I ever had were hard. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. it. I'm gonna eat a little chip. I told myself I wasn't gonna have any chips, but a little baby. Your salsa is the best salsa. It's so good. I told you. Hmm? I told you. That's great. Oh god, here I go have another small chip. Oh. What? Just watching you. <laughs> I have six piercings all together and now I only have three. When I was four, I choked on a lifesaver. Isn't that ironic? Because I heard that the lifesaver actually has a hole in the middle to prevent choking and so you can still breathe when you choke on it, if you choke on it. But I did choke and I wasn't breathing, I couldn't talk and my mom didn't know what to do so she hurried up, called 911 and they showed up and thankfully saved my life. And they actually gave me a teddy bear with the um, firefighter like suit on the teddy bear and I named the teddy bear lifesaver and I was in the newspaper. Um, little mascara, I am wearing jewelry in this and <laughs> why are you looking at me? <laughs> She's looking at me and just smiling. So we- Almost seven months. Those goals, those goals, those goals. Personality quiz. I'm a little nervous. I wanted to do this on here with you guys. There's a column A and a column B and I have to click which one best describes me. So you guys are going to be learning a little bit about me today and you're also going to be learning is Amber Lynn a narcissist. First thing first it says I am a 27 year old female. Number one, I have a natural talent for influencing people or I am not good at influencing people. I'm going to go with I have a natural talent for influencing people, but I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. Two, modesty doesn't become me or I am essentially a modest person. Um, I'm going to say modesty doesn't become me. Oh my god, I feel like this is going to turn out really bad. I'm kind of nervous for this quiz. Three, I would do almost anything on a dare or I tend to be a fairly cautious person. Definitely, I'm a fairly cautious person. Every time I play truth or dare, I always go with truth. Four, when people compliment me, I sometimes get embarrassed. Or, I know that I am good because everybody keeps telling me so. Oh God, definitely the first one. Every time I get a compliment, I'm embarrassed, I don't know how to act. I actually was on You Now earlier and I was talking about that. I just get so awkward and weird. Five, the thought of ruling the world frightens the hell out of me. Or, if I ruled the world, it would be a better place. Definitely, it scares the hell out of me. I wouldn't be able to rule the world. Six, I can usually talk my way out of anything or I try to accept the consequences of my behavior. I'm gonna be honest and say I try to talk my way out of anything, but if it doesn't work, then obviously I accept the consequences. You guys, I'm trying to be 100% honest on this because I truly wanna see what my results are. Seven, I prefer to blend in the crowd or I like to be the center of attention. I'm gonna be honest, it truly depends on the people I'm around. I'm just gonna go with I like to be the center of attention. Number eight, I will be a success or I'm not too concerned about success. I put I will be a success because I can't say that I'm not concerned with that because in my opinion, success has a lot to do with money. That's just how I kind of grew up was like, if you don't have money, then you're not too successful. And I want to be successful in that sense because I want to be able to take care of myself. Nine, I'm no better or worse than most people, or I think I'm a special person. Definitely, I am no better or worse than most people. 10, I'm not sure if I would make a good leader or I see myself as a good leader. Truly depends on the situation. But if it's something as simple as like, say when you're in school, and you had to do like a group project. I feel like I make a good leader in that sense, but like leader of the world or something like super crazy, like a big company, then no. I'm just gonna go with, I'm not sure if I'd make a good leader because who knows. 11, I am assertive or I wish I were more assertive. I'm just gonna go with I'm assertive because I don't wish I was more assertive. 12, I like to have authority over other people or I don't mind following orders. I'm gonna go with I like to have authority because I'm 27 years old. I don't want people telling me what to do. 13, I find it easy to manipulate people or I don't like it when I find myself manipulating people. Definitely, I don't like when I find myself manipulating people. God, the word manipulating is so hard to say. 14, I insist upon getting the respect that is due or I usually get the respect that I deserve. I believe that everyone should get the respect that they deserve. 15, I don't particularly, that word's also hard to say, <laughs> like to show off my body or I like to show off my body. I'm gonna go with, uh, I don't like to show off my body. 16, I can read people like a book or people are sometimes hard to understand. I definitely feel like I get vibes from people so I feel like I can read people. 17, if I feel competent, I am willing to take responsibility for making decisions or I like to take responsibility for making decisions. I guess I'm willing to take responsibility. <laughs> oh my god, I'm scared for these results. 18, I just want to be reasonably happy or I want to amount to something in the eyes of the world. 
I want to be reasonably happy. I'm, I feel like happiness is really important. 19, my body is nothing special, or I like to look at my body. Easy, my body's nothing special. 20, I try not to be a show off, or I will always show off if I get the chance. I feel like when I'm proud of something, I do kind of like to talk about it. So I'm just gonna say, I, I, I hate admitting this. I will usually show off if I get the chance. 21, I always know what I'm doing, or sometimes I'm not sure of what I'm doing. Definitely, sometimes I'm not sure, sure of what I'm doing. 22, I sometimes depend on people to get things done, or I rarely depend on anyone else to get things done. Sometimes I depend on um, other people to get things done. I share a house with roommates. We all do chores together, and obviously I'm a bigger girl, so it's harder for me to do certain things. I don't like that about myself, definitely not, so please don't twist my words. 23, sometimes I tell good stories, or everyone likes to hear my stories. I guess sometimes I tell good stories. I expect a great deal from other people, or I like to do things for other people. Ooh, I definitely like to do things for other people. I'm definitely a giver. 25, I will never be satisfied until I get all that I deserve. Yikes, <laughs> I hope no one clicked that. Or I take my satisfactions as they come. Definitely I take my satisfactions as they come. I don't know why, but I feel like this question repeated itself. But 26, compliments embarrass me or I like to be complimented. Obviously I like to be complimented because I feel like compliments make someone feel good. But overall, I definitely get embarrassed, awkward, and sometimes I feel like people are just doing it out of pity. 27, I have a strong will to power or power for its own sake doesn't interest me. Power does not interest me. It kind of scares me. 28, I don't care about new fads and fashions or I like to start new fads and fashions. I don't care about new fads or fashions. I mean, if I like something, I like something. If it's a fad, okay, but if it's not, then I don't care. 29, I like to look at myself in the mirror or I'm not particularly interested in looking at myself in the mirror. This one's a hard one. I feel like I am very unattractive, but I feel like my body is so weird looking that I can't help but look. I know that sounds really odd, but I'm just gonna go with, I don't like looking in the mirror because when I do look in the mirror, it makes me sad and I try not to look at it as much as possible. 30, I really like to be the center of attention or it makes me uncomfortable to be the center of attention. I'm gonna go with, I like it. Ooh. 31, I can live my life any way that I want to, or people can't always live their lives in terms of what they want. Obviously at 27, I like to rant and say, I can do what I want, boo-boo, but that's not just, that's just not the reality of things. So I feel like people can't always live their lives the way they want to. 32, being an authority doesn't mean that much to me, or people always seem to recognize my authority. Doesn't mean that much to me. 33, I would prefer to be a leader. Why are some of these repeated? I'm going crazy. By the way, we're almost done. <laughs> so 33, I would prefer to be a leader or it makes little difference to me whether I'm a leader or not. Again, depends on the situation because I feel like when you're a leader, you know that things are going to get done and if someone else is leading, then you don't know how good of a leader they are. I don't feel like that makes you a narcissist to want to get the job done right. But I'm just going to go with it makes little difference to me because honestly, if I do my part, that's all that matters, I guess. 34, I'm going to be a great person or I hope I'm going to be successful. I'm gonna go with, I'm going to be a great person. 35, people sometimes believe what I tell them or I can make anybody believe anything I want them to. Ooh, I don't like either of those. <laughs> I'm just gonna go with people believe what I tell them because I tell them the truth, so. 36, I am a born leader or leadership is a quality that takes a long time to develop. Definitely a long time to develop. I don't think anyone's born just like, I'm the leader of the world, bitch. 37, I wish somebody would someday write my biography or I don't like people to pry into my life for any reason. A little bit of both, but I think my biography would be really good. A lot of people have always told me I need to write a book because I was in foster care, the things I went through, stuff with my weight. So I'm just gonna go with the biography one. 38, I get upset when people don't notice how I look when I go out in public, or I don't mind blending into the crowd when I go out in public. Again, that depends, because if I'm looking good and like Becky don't notice or something, I'm like, girl. But then again, I don't like all the compliments because it makes me feel nervous. And I'm like, ooh. I'm just gonna say I get upset when people don't notice. <laughs> 39, I am more capable than other people, or there's a lot that I can learn from other people. Definitely a lot that I can learn from other people. This is the last question. 40, I am much like everybody else or I'm an extraordinary person. I'm just gonna put I am much like everybody else because we've all been through struggles. We all are doing, doing our life. There's really nothing extraordinary about me. So now I'm gonna press score my narcissism quiz now. Oh my God, I'm so scared. Okay, it says my total is 13. It says between 12 and 15 is average. So I'm right in between average. It says celebrities often score closer to 18. Narcissists score over 20. Oh, I'm not a narcissist. <gasps> okay, that makes me feel so good. I said, Frank, man, you done scared me. No, okay, it wasn't like that. <laughs> no. Immediately, he said, you are not in trouble. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else experiences this, but after I wear flats and I take them off, the bottom of my feet are like 
baby but soft. I don't know what it is. They're not sweaty or anything like that. Like that's weird. But they're like soft, kind of like the softness of a really soft pair of socks or something. And our floor, we don't have any carpet at all. And so we had just gotten home from somewhere and I was sitting on my bed, which is on the floor. I prefer my bed on the floor. I'm able to get up fine. That's not, you know, the issue here, but I had just taken off my flats. So the bottom of my feet were super soft. I don't understand why this happens. It's so weird, but I had to go to the bathroom. So I was getting up off the bed and to get up off the bed, I do this little like turny bit and I get up by using like the strength in my feet <laughs> and my feet slipped from under me and I landed on my left knee. It terrified me. I couldn't get up or anything. So how I had to get up was I had to crawl onto the bed in this like weird maneuver. And it was just, it was pitiful. I was like, are you for real right now? If I wanted more money, I'd be making move bombs, honey. <laughs> Are a disrespectful piece of.